You are drunk, aren't you? No, you've spoken often about a say in Black Alley, Nix. Now we've got a good reason. God, man, you said a say. This isn't torture, Slubber. We already know what we need to know. This is punishment. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, a.k.a. Hembar, and today we're doing a spoiler-free review of Paul S. Kemp's A Discourse in Steel. A Discourse in Steel is a 2013 novel by Paul S. Kemp, and it is book two in the Eowyn Nix saga, of which there's only three written right now, though apparently there's a chance for more. So, it's an extremely awesome book, just to say the least. Uh, Nix is a dropout of the sorceress Conclave, and Ael is a worshipper, if you could put it that way, of the momentary god. And they're both rogues, uh, and, you know, he's kind of barbarian as well. Uh, thieves, a la the Grey Mouser and Fawford from Fritz Leiber's Linkmar Tales. Uh, the two are out in the rain at the start of the story, bantering about Ael's love life, if you can call it that, and Nix expelling from the Conclave. One of the moons is risen, and Manir, the green moon of mages, will rise soon. The duo have been tasked by a professor from the Conclave to look for one another who went missing, uh, studying Black Alley. Uh, so, essentially, we have a missing wizard. An ally, or an alley shrouded in darkness and a place of infamy in Durfallen, as no one who ever enters returns. And it sounds like a job for two legendary swordsmen, of course. Uh, but in reality, Aeol is smitten by the woman mage, Anora, and so signs the two up for this impossible task without any promise of payment. First problem will be finding Black Alley as it travels, appearing in different areas each night. The most popular theory is that it is some ancient portal magic uh, left over by the same people who built the ancient grand structures like the Archbridge. Rusilla and Merelda, sisters from the first book that are freed from the terrible tyranny of their brother, are present as well. Uh, they have made a living telling fortunes in gaudy costumes, reminiscent of many a trope, but without being tied to some unappealing ethnic idea. Uh, they are essentially wards of Aeol and Nyx at this point, and reminded me some of some character, a very certain character from Thieves' World. Uh, it's swiftly paced, it's quick and engaging, there's good dialogue and comic bromance, has some disturbing humor in the cosmic horror vein as well, uh, and it's satisfyingly dark. Uh, we learn of another god, Aster, which <laughs> sounds awfully like a disaster or is somehow related to Star, but this god has the worship of merchants and thieves. Of course, there is a Thieves' Guild too, and it's important in this tale. It's a little different Two is a guild is led by a committee of eight rather than a singular ruler. Of course, this committee has a head called the Upright Man. They are also priests of Aster, so it's a religious deal, too. I don't think uh, being a thief outside of the guild is illegal like it is in Linkmar, um, but there are benefits, and the Watch isn't very vigilant about murdering and, uh, any thieves, essentially, as long as that's not rich people as the victims. Uh, there are um, some moody themes of memory and deeds that are worthwhile in this one as well. And Rusk is another character, a thief in the guild making moves to improve his place in the committee, and we get sections from his point of view as well. But overall, it's an awesome book. Uh, we get uh, more cursing than Liber. In fact, it reminds me of Linkmar mixed with Selgans from the Forgotten Realms, uh, which Kemp, you know, really brought to life anyways. Uh, Kemp likes his rogues and his psychic powers. Uh, some inspiration from Ilma and Linkmar, specifically in this one, I could tell. Uh, there's no world safe but their own. And they're really doing what they want, and Venture and Drink are their call signs, and I've seen some say you can't have a sword and source protagonist that serves anyone but himself or herself, and that wasn't even true for King Conan, uh, not for Hanavar and Aeol and Nyx. Uh, they, they have people to watch over, right? I, I do wish there was a bit more uh, women that are badass. You have the sisters, but they're very fragile if powerful uh, when they get the chance. Overall, this is awesome. There would be a lot more to talk about if I was giving you spoilers and the title is phenomenal of course too and it's a great modern love letter of sword and sorcery of Robert e. howard and fritz Leiber, in particular um anyways liam from liam's lyceum i will catch you next time